It's the lesson with Mr. Clark on Lake Effect Radio. You're gonna learn today. You're gonna learn today. All right, all right, all right. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lesson Radio Show. <laughs> Every time, do it again. I heard hers. I didn't hear mine. I can't hear. I can't hear you. Mm -mm. It's Sam on. I don't hear you. I'm just not. Maybe you. Yeah, turn it up a little bit. Cause I hear that thing. But I can't hear that. I hear. Hello. I can't hear myself in my. uh... You gotta turn up the earphones. Okay. See, turn up some more. Cause I can't hear. Oh my. Okay. We good? We're good. We good? We're okay. good. We're good. So, welcome back, Miss Isheree. Hello. Miss G Girl. Hello. My my beautiful pain <laughs> in my side <laughs> about getting this thing rolling. But hey, she go she gonna know. Okay, before it gets started. <laughs> um So how you guys doing in general before we jump into it? Doing all right. Excellent, kind of, yeah. Doing all right, recovering. The same. Recovering. I'm, my energy is more balanced than it was last week, so I'm feeling yeah. good about that. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff just naturally went away, so that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm still a little sad, but we'll get to that. True. Yeah, I'm sad too. Well, segue it is. So, first things first. I don't want to make a joke out of it. I was going to say first things first. Rest in peace, Uncle Phil. But this is not a joking matter. We um, suffered three losses this past two weeks. So we have uh, Billy Paul, who was the author of Me and Mrs. Jones. Um, it was one of my favorite songs. Not one of my favorite. Well, yeah, one of my favorite old school songs. Like, I knew that when it came on. And How I got excited. You? When I first heard it. Mm-hmm. I feel like it, it was in a commercial, like a car commercial, mm-hmm. when I was like eight or ten. Huh. And from that point on, it was like, yeah, who is Mrs. Jones? And like, <laughs> they got what a thing. What do? Right. And it's going on. Right. I want to know. And on. And, and on. on. And his voice, he just, mm-hmm, that did something for me. Uh-huh. Um, But if you didn't know about Billy Paul, he was um a pioneer, uh, as as quoted by Quest Love of The Roots. He equated himself to Marvin Gaye and Stevie Wonders by being one of the most criminally unmentioned proprietors of socially conscious post-revolutionary 60s civil rights music. And yes, you know why? Why? I'm sorry to interrupt. No, go for it. (laughs) Because there's a song that he put out, Let the Dollar Circulate. All right. And so it basically talked about the things that happened in the 60s about rent going up, you know, you're not having enough for to to keep up with the times and when i first heard that song redid by jeezy it was the same thing that we were going through in 2008 2009 ish wow so yes that's his political that was my favorite political song about him from him uh, old to a g Mm-hmm. Well, there you go. Yes. And he was also known for mixing pop, funk, electric, and psychedelic music together. So he kind of gave us a creative feel. So that sound we kind of hear of those fusions, he's partly responsible for. We also lost female wrestler China. Um, was she WWF? Did WWF. She yeah. And her actual real name was Lauren. And I remember... I actually remember watching China on TV, and I think um, the reason I wanted to speak on her is because she was a feminist before being a feminist was mm-hmm. a thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I really look back and I was like, oh my gosh, she did so much for that before it was a thing, before it was popularized, before you know that was a way to sell your album. But anyways, female wrestler, not in regards to Beyonce, don't you ever think that, I'm talking about other artists who may be using that as a way but anyways she um was dubbed the ninth wonder of the world after andre the giant who was the eighth only female to hold wwf intercontinental champion twice Mm. only female to this date and she did it twice 
and first woman to participate in Royal Rumble and King of the Ring. Now, I have absolutely no idea or have not watched any of those, but I actually had a, a GameCube, so I know. Mm-hmm. And she had to be like 20, 30 men mm-hmm. for her to get that time, to be a part of it. Um, and woman met. And won matches against prominent men like Triple H, Kirk Angle, and Chris Jericho. You know, she um, was part. She was a, she was part of a, a up and coming, emerging type of entertainment mm-hmm. back in the day. Because I can remember going to um, downtown events where they had the little small ring, mm-hmm. and they would do the wrestling. And that has become a mega conglomerate of action. And she was at the forefront of helping that come true. So that's some, you know, that's some mad love to China. And if I can actually remember the only, actually remember, if I can remember the only match I think I know of her in, it was against like, I want to say it was against like, Chris Jericho, H X Pac, who ended up being her husband oh, is in that real right? life. Wow. He had like a, a arn and a ironing board and like kitchen in the vacuum cleaner in the ring or whatever. And he was like, "This is a woman's role." Da, 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 da. And she came in, knocked everything over, cracked his head open with the ironing board, <laughs> and that was my first time seeing a woman stand up against a man for the role he thought she was supposed to play. Wow, male patriarch. How about that? So <laughs> there she go with those definitions. I again. know, right? She gonna <laughs> keep does, us SAT actually, ready around you know here. What I actually made. Um, uh, uh, Microsoft Word sheet and I put Elise's vocabulary. At least <laughs> word of the day. Yeah. I really thought we should add that for you. Like we just need a word of the week I, from I Elise. I mean, actually, I have a list going. <laughs> <laughs> if you would like us to pull one, I just. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's um our ode to China, and because I don't know his whole discography, and because I'm not of the age group who can speak to him as he needs to be spoken about. I'm going to pass it over to Miss G Girl to speak on Prince. Well, it's a sad day. It is. <laughs> it's been a sad week. Uh, I couldn't believe that people were texting me like, are you okay? Are you okay? And at that moment, somebody walked into the office and said to me, did you hear he, the, our, our purple majesty? He is gone. And I was mm. devastated. Um, Prince was the first person who introduced me to rock. Believe it or not. And even though, you know, you have some context in terms of rock bands and, you know, um, bands like the Beatles or whatever, Prince introduced me to them. Okay. You know, with his music and all of the instruments uh, that he played on his own, that he learned on his own. And he genuinely deserved to be called a genius because he was. Um, his lyrics are prolific. If you mm-hmm. listen to uh, his songs, some of the things that he talks about are timeless. One of my favorite songs is Sign of the Times. Mm-hmm. And if you listen to those lyrics or if you sing them, everything that is has happened, um, that is happening and will continue to happen are just um, evident in that one um particular track amongst many um dl hugley talked about how prince was um instrumental in bringing us all to our sexual selves (laughs) if you will Mm -hmm. um in in a way that you wouldn't expect because dl called it audio porn (laughs) and it's so true (laughs) because he was a very sensual man Um, androgynous at times Uh, a lot of people who were giving um, comments and odes to him talked about how you you better not bring your woman Mm -hmm. to the party because she may leave home with them we don't know what that man was saying (laughs) Um, but we certainly knew whatever he did he could deliver it and he could make happen whatever he wanted to make happen he created this whole world um, around himself Mm -hmm. Uh, that he saw himself as and he wanted you to enjoy and we did and for that I thank him Um, he gave me courage made me feel adventurous he's kind of entertainer and makes you feel like you could do whatever you want to do however you want to do and be your authentic self at all times Mm -hmm. and I appreciate him for that so um, Prince dead 
passed away, 57 mm -hmm. years old. But as we were speaking about it earlier, it don't even seem like he gone. It doesn't. Yeah. You know, because he was already sort of elusive. He was and, out of this world. Yeah, and so you, you heard him when you heard him. You hear him on the radio and you just think, oh, yeah, that's Prince, mm -hmm. you know. And any number of songs could make your day. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You have a moment you want to share, Lisa? Because I know I'm going to share my moment. Um, I just, I, everything about him, it That's, was just phenomenal. He, it, <laughs> oh. No, go ahead, go ahead. It was just his music. It was just feel good music when you were younger, when you got older you <clears throat> listened to the words more and you knew exactly his message that he was trying to get that you may have missed when you were younger. Um, it was just, that's how good, the way. That's how good he was. Yeah. Because you could, like you said, at a younger age, you could, it, it could be a sing along for you. Right. You got a little older and you would listen to those words and be like, Oh, right. Is that what that means? Yeah. And still to this day, I was listening to Let's Grow Go Crazy. Mm -hmm. And um, I I made a comment on Facebook. And I wanted to make sure I had the words right before I typed it. And I actually went to look at the lyrics. And one of my favorite parts of that song is when he say, because in this life, you on your own. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's all day, everybody, every day. And, it, you know, and if the elevator tries to bring you down, <laughs> go crazy. But then there's a line that says, hit a higher floor. I never knew it said that. Mm -hmm. So basically what he was saying is, you know, you may be down there and everything is going crazy. You got to figure out what to do. You hit a higher floor. And that's what he was all about on everything. Yeah. On everything. Mm-hmm. Um, mm -hmm. The one song I know out of the what it looks like millions because somebody put his album releases up and I saw like a consecutive 10 years where he had one every year. It's like, oh, my God. But um, call my uh, <gasps> call my name, my favorite. Like and I will listen to it over and mm -hmm. over. And, and like for <laughs> I, it's funny because it, it was like, dang, he loves somebody. I just can't stop writing songs about right. you. Mm -hmm. And he n did not stop writing songs. Mm -hmm. And it was so deep. I had to go, like, into it. And then I understood him as the persona. And that's what us as young people know more of him than the music. His the persona. persona. And to me, those things are almost more valuable than the mm -hmm. music they created. Because they're like, how can you post it? I felt like people were being shady because they were like, young people shouldn't even be posting comments. No, he did a lot. A lot of us young people are educated who understand that each legend we have, each prolific person we have creates a window of opportunity that wouldn't have been there before or a way of thinking that wouldn't have been there before. So, so for that, I thanked him. Mm -hmm. Like for your legacy to create something or a pathway that wouldn't have been possible before mm -hmm. for me or for whoever or just having people understand life in a way they didn't understand life before mm -hmm. where I can express myself using your words. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's important. So, no, everybody has had a moment with him. Right. Mm -hmm. If it was one of his shady moments where he walked on The View mm -hmm. and Sherry Shepard said, I've been wanting to have sex with you all my life. And he shadily walked right back out and didn't <laughs> say no. That moment will live for me forever. Mm -hmm. I'm like, who is this man who had enough clout to walk up on the set of The View midstream, mm -hmm. don't say nothing, have them all excited and then walk away? And mm -hmm. they talk about him the whole time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's who he was. Yes. So from that aspect of who he was, it was like, oh, my God, how do you create that? What is that? Because mm -hmm. he created a universe around him and just allowed us to be a part of it. Yeah. That's right. So I, that's what I that's, thank you for. I agree. I had I got excited when you said call my name because that is one of my favorite newer songs. The reason why is because we played it uh, when he first came out with the Musicology album. That was a song we played um, in Howard University Showtime Marching Band. <laughs> wow. And Our HBCU yes. grad over there. <laughs> and I remember playing that song, and we played that song with so much emotion. And we, like we would say in D.C., we cranked the mess out of that song. <laughs> and I remember the time where we would practice a song. Our band director would turn off the lights or whatever, and we would just crank wow. the hell out of that song. And so... 
even when I listen to our rendition of it today, I still feel that same energy and just liveliness of that song. So that is one of my favorite because I had a a chance to play it. And, mm-hmm. you know, it it's one thing to listen to it, it yeah. but it's another to play and try to play with as much emotion, you know, that he wrote the song. So, I mean, I think as an artist, it was so cool of him to be, um, to do those impromptu shows, mm-hmm. right. just showing up places. 1985, Cincinnati, Ohio. I love you for I that mean, thing where you just gave me, but go ahead. Yeah, <laughs> he, I mean, he would show up places and just be like, you know, he gonna do a set. Right, as if. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. I mean, people were going insane and he would do this and he had done this. Uh, all the way up until, as I understand it, you know, his last days that he would do this. He was a um, philanthropist that, mm-hmm. you know, was giving away lots of money and funding many things. I heard a story about how he called Al Sharpton and told Al Sharpton that he wanted to give him some money. He didn't want anyone to know where this money came oh, from. Wow. He gave it to, I think it was Eric Garner's family. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. And Recently. He, mm-hmm. And then he, uh, there was a, there's a housing project or there's a neighborhood of some sort in Los Angeles mm-hmm. and they have some solar panels or something. Yeah. He paid for all of it. Mm-hmm. And so he was, he was going around doing all of these things you know, on the low because mm-hmm. he didn't he didn't need he he didn't need the the, the, the limelight. He didn't right. need, you know, the recognition. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he didn't need that. He knew who he was. He knew what he was about. He knew what he was gonna do and that's what he did. That's mm-hmm. what I loved about him. Mm-hmm. I could remember one New Year's Eve, I was so mad at everybody in my family. I don't know what they did. <laughs> I have no idea. And I said, you know what? I'm going to the Prince concert. And I went down in the basement and I turned <laughs> on the television and Prince did a whole set on New Year's Eve. It was a whole concert. And I rocked with Prince for the rest of the evening in the basement on New Year's Eve until New Year's Day. Wow. Mm. That's my memory of him. Because mm-hmm. I felt like it was me and him. Mm-hmm. And that's how he made people feel. Yeah. Well, before we make this memorial longer than his discography, which we can't do. (laughs) At no time. Never. I'm going to jump over to a segue that was actually given to me by Gina. Other people who will pop up on the scene and make a scene. Mm. Miss Beyonce herself released her visual album Lemonade over this past Saturday, April, what was that? 23rd. 23rd. Mm -hmm. Um, We're not going to go into that in depth right now because we know how we are. And we won't talk about nothing else. So we're going to save that to the end of the show. We move Senior Seminar up and Teachable Moments down because we know we got to talk about making lemons, making lemonade out of lemons, Mm -hmm. which is going to be our Teachable topic. But kind of segueing from Beyonce, how to make it work with a partner who isn't playing fair. Hmm. So our other news hot topic is Kelly Ripper. And Michael Strahan parting ways on the news. So. Yeah. That's the, tough. The, some basic background, if you guys aren't aware. Michael Strahan has been offered a deal to go on Good Morning America by the Disney Upper Echelons, would you say? Yes. Um, CEO, actually. Mm. And he wanted to make that move without actually telling Kelly, mm-hmm. who is the predecessor of Regis. Mm-hmm. and yeah, kind of the face yeah. of the show right now. Yeah. So if you move away her co-chair, that kind of leaves her in the space of, well, what you about to do with my show? Right. So them, he, Kelly and Michael have had a tiff about him being so secretive about his move. And she hasn't returned to the show since his announcement. Um, other news in regards to that, she'll be back tomorrow. And she was actually saying that she wasn't going to be back until he was gone all the way together Mm -hmm. now my question i guess to speak on this article briefly is do your coworkers owe you any loyalty in the workplace or would you expect something out of michael if you were kelly that's tough because it's business and we don't really know what their relationship was actually can i speak to that real quick Mm -hmm. i was quite surprised to find out they're not friends 
mm-hmm. outside of the show because they do a really good job at creating that atmosphere like that whole hey how you been doing since the last time we spoke thing I stole that from their show because it seemed like they really cared about each other like you care about what she did the night before like yeah. you just saw her yesterday it does seem like they have good chemistry so it was just but like a lot. that's how a lot of shows are though I mean, but they're really good at it. Yeah. Because sometimes when I've watched the show, um, they've indicated, oh, you know, when when we stopped by, when we came to your house and we did X, Y, and Z, I said, oh, they hang out at each other's houses or Hmm. they do activities from time Mm -hmm. to time or they, you know, they run in the same circle. So maybe they are cool. Maybe they are friendly, you know. And so I, I was under the impression that it was all good. Now, if that's the case. And they did have that level of a relationship. If Michael was bound legally not to say anything, that was going to be tough for him. I'm going to just tell you the truth. I don't think that's what happened. Because I think sometimes Strayhand, Strayhand's history tell me he do this stuff all the time. Like he don't mind jumping teams on somebody? Well, I mean, you know, he'll just quit you in the middle of the night. (laughs) <laughs> oh, with, that's, that's what his, I'm just saying. Oh, with his wife situations, yeah, he well, will quit you in the well, middle. Well, not just his wife, but uh, what was Nicole Murphy? Mm. The same thing. Yeah, he can't. You know, when he ready to go or where he ready to make a move, he just bounce. He just bounce. Yeah, and Hell so yeah. that's where that's where my focus is in terms of what happened. It seems like to me that he got he got a. He got a, a reputation for doing it like that. And so if that's what happened, then I'd be mad like her. I would, I think I have, I would have to agree on that. Now, if it wasn't that, he had no obligation to really tell her what his Nothing were. like what? If it wasn't way, the way she the said. The way I said it, like, you know. You know, where he just he said, sh- I'm going to leave. If he, if he is shady and that's how he do it and that's what he did to her, mm-hmm. then I'd be If mad. I was Kelly, I'd be pissed. Yeah. Hmm. But if they are, but you know, if, if, if that's, let's say they are cool. Let's say they are cool. He could have. He could have dropped some hints. He definitely should have <laughs> said something some to her. Some just something. on the strength, like. You gonna set yourself up to make more, leaving me out here to possibly make nothing, and we were supposed to be cool. That's the only thing. Like, for me, now, as if I was Kelly, I wouldn't think two things of it because I know how people operate. People shady to look out for themselves first, and if it's a move to be made, and you had to slight somebody. <laughs> I know people are willing to do that. Now, me personally, I wouldn't. I'm not going to set you up for the woo if I call myself liking you or, you know what I'm saying, working with you for an extended period of time. But at the same time, I feel like on her end, she should have knew it was up. Like, you sit with this man every day. You knew something wasn't right. And if you felt the coming, you should have prepared for it. Like, okay, you feel like you leaving? Because I hear that coming up off you. We just going to have three people in a row when you decide to make your move. That's what I'm going to do. And I'll make sure they were more important to you. And then when you do go over there, I'm going to make sure I make frequent visits to Good Morning America because we cool too. And I'm going to sit over there with you and see, is you popping that hard? You know, it's I don't know. I just, I don't know if she actually knew. I feel like she got blindsided. I feel like she got blindsided. I don't know. I mean, in a way it was blindsided because he didn't explicitly say it to her. But you can sit in a room with people and, and get the feel like, Mm mm, something off. They about to pull a stunt. You think so? I think so. I would have liked her to um, do this differently than she did it, in my opinion, mm-hmm. because she still could have been winning. Mm-hmm. And when she right, she could have been she could have still been winning. But when she didn't come back, I mean that rocked her. I'm sure. And you know, there's there's some. Um, information out there that Only says that she, like she lost at this she point she actually got Can't him got, to go. well she got him the gig oh to be on the show good morning with her. america like she she is the one that made the warm introduction for him to even go over wow, that's, that's i don't know if more shady. that's allegedly i don't know if that's true but that's what i've been reading and even on the strength that like we're out Without her show being created, he would have never probably even made it that far. He did owe her something on that strain. Well, Michael, I didn't see him coming, but he turned out to be okay 
with her. He balances the show with her on his own. I don't think he could rock on his own like she could rock on her own. Mm -hmm. I don't think so, you know. So it is going to be interesting to see what happens with him over on uh, GMA and if he could carry it. He can carry it, but she has been in the business a long time. And she knows how to carry it just like a Hoda or a Kathy Lee. Mm -hmm. And hey, they learn from a Regis. So they pretty good at it. I think the most significant point, and then we'll just move on from this, that I, I kind of pulled out from Michael was like, somebody who helped you, brought you up, kind of honed your skills. You really going to diss them and turn them into competition? That's how you feel about it? Like, it's, really? It's business. Okay. Yeah, but with business, there's always karma. Mm. That's right. It's summer 16. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, and I'm going to close it there as senior seminar. And um, if you guys hadn't, if I hadn't said it, because I kind of run Facebook stream and then I run the actual um, live stream. So if I haven't said it on the radio, we kind of switched the order of the show today just to make sure we didn't go off into tangents because I know how we get. <laughs> and if we started with Beyonce, we wouldn't have made it to nothing else. So Teacher Performance is actually going to be at the end and Senior sem Seminar was at the beginning. We're going to come back in a couple seconds for financial literacy and we're going to talk about um, financial planning with non-married couples and how you should handle that if your relationship has to part ways. And um, considering that Beyonce and Jay-Z have quite a nice lump sum of money together, I thought it would be really interesting to talk about what happens financially in relationships. <laughs> so, there you go. We're going to pray, play Pray You Catch Me. This is actually the first song of Lemonade. We can't play the whole album for you because we just ain't got that kind of time. But I wanted to give you a feel of how it went. So, in the very beginning, she said, she put him on Front Street in the middle. I ain't as mad as I thought I was. At the end, we still cool. So this is a song from the very beginning. All right, people. <laughs> <laughs> 